Welcome to today's stupendous Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth, and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. So, you are the designated family genealogist. How do you share your hard work and research with other family members? More importantly, how do you get them involved? That's where Roots Magic's unique shareable CD features comes to the rescue. And uh, tonight you're going to learn how to make a CD or a DVD that contains all of your data, pictures, and even its own, even its own copy of Roots Magic that will not only show everyone in what you've discovered, but excite them as well. Now, let's start out with a quick poll. And the question is, how do you share your family history with others? And you can choose I don't, or paper, lots and lots of paper, JEDCOM files, or shareable CDs. OK, here are the results. 14% of you do not share your family history with others. 57% of you use good old-fashioned paper. 42% of you like to save trees and use JEDCOM files. And 16% use the shareable CD feature. Hopefully after this evening's presentation, the number of you using shareable CDs will be quite a bit higher. And with that, I will turn the time over to Bruce. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, I found that poll kind of interesting uh, that most of the time when you're sharing data, it's either using paper uh, or sending them something like a GEDCOM file. Now, that's great being able to share your data that way. Those both have disadvantages. The disadvantage of sending reports and, and, and that type of thing on paper is that you are limiting what you send only to that particular data you happen to have included in that report. You're not basically providing everything that you've collected. Okay, as for GEDCOM, what you're sending them is your data. Uh, that would be your names, your dates, your places, notes, sources, that kind of thing. But what you're missing in that case are any images or media items that you have. Now, what we're going to show you uh, this evening is what's called a shareable CD. What a shareable CD lets you do is send your entire database along with all of your media items. Okay, so if you've got pictures, if you've got sound clips, if you've got video clips, being able to send all of those to a person so that they can actually look at that data um, and and even be able to print out some of those reports themselves. Now, in the past, creating a CD was a lot of work. You had to really know what you were doing, and you could do things like put some of those reports you might have generated on a CD, uh, you know, or put a GEDCOM on a CD. But what this is going to let you do is put your entire database with all your media on a CD, it's going to put a read-only version of Roots Magic on the CD, so it gives them something to be able to navigate around and look at the data, the pictures, the media. And it's also going to create a, a nice little home page so that when they put the CD into their drive, then it's going to bring up this nice little home page that you have created to navigate into the program. Now, when I say CD, when I say shareable CD, if you have a lot of data, you can also use a DVD as well. Okay, a DVD is going to be able to hold bigger databases, more media, that type of thing. Now, that being said, the DVD that you create is still a computer DVD. It still needs to be put into a computer because it's going to be running a copy of Roots Magic. So this is not a DVD like you watch movies, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. To create a shareable CD, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the Tools menu, 
and then I'm going to come down to create a shareable CD. When I click on that, Roots Magic is going to bring up an opening screen that says create a shareable CD of your database and has a little bit of stuff uh, for you to read and we're going to come back to this after. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go right in, click next to begin creating our shareable CD. So I'm going to click on next and Roots Magic asks me to enter some basic information about this CD. So one of the things it's asking me for is a title for this little introduction page that I mentioned. So we're going to call this the Smith Family CD. You can put whatever title you want. And the next thing is a photo for the introduction page. Now if you don't have a picture or an image, you can leave this blank and Roots Magic will substitute kind of a, a plain old, you know, some books and a CD kind of thing, a boring thing. You know, I strongly advise you to go ahead and pick an image for it. But we'll go ahead and click on Browse. And let's go ahead and let's select a picture. Let's find a picture that we like. And we'll go ahead and select this picture. And this can be an image of an ancestor that, you're, that you uh, want to put on here. It can be an old homestead. It can be a map. It can be anything you want. Okay, the third thing it's asking for is an introduction. And this is where you can say anything you want about this CD, this shareable CD. You can put information about the CD itself, or you can put information about the data that's on the CD. So let's just go ahead and make up something. Um, I hope you enjoy this CD. It was a lot of work. In fact, you should consider sending me some money for all my troubles. Okay, so anyways, put whatever you want in there, uh, and you'll get a chance to preview this before you actually create the CD. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click on Next. And now Roots Magic is going to ask for some con contact information for the home page. So I'm going to say, let's say we're John Doe and we live at 1234 Main Street in uh, New York, New York, 10000 uh, USA. So you can put whatever you want for the address. Okay, for the phone number, that's how I do 801-555-1212. If you have a cell phone, you can put that, an email address, uh, me at here.com, a fax number, a website address. If you happen to have a family website, you can actually just go ahead and put your family website, just a place that they could link to actually get to that. Okay. Now this last item, this is actually kind of a cool item. As I mentioned, when you create this CD that you're going to send to your family, when they run that read-only version of Roots Magic so that they can navigate around and look at the data and everything, they can print some of the reports. They're not all in there, but they can print uh, family group sheets and pedigree charts and things like that. Well, what this lets you do is add some text that will print at the bottom of every page that they print out. So you could put a copyright notice, or you could put for more information, contact, and then put your own contact information so that if the family member you send this CD to prints a report or a chart and gives it to somebody, that that person knows who to go back to to see the original information. Okay, so this is all I actually have to fill out. Those two pages, that's all it asks for. Now. I can now say I want to preview my CD opening page, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And this little screen is what's going to pop up when somebody puts the CD that you sent them into their drive. So in other words, you're going to send them that CD, they're going to pop that into the drive, and this is going to come up. And it's going to have your title, it's going to have the picture that you selected, and it's going to have some options. So if they click on About This Disc, that's where they're going to see you beg for money or whatever you happen to put into that introduction. If they click contact the author, 
that is going to bring up your contact information. And if you happen to have used a real address instead of 123 Fake Street, you can click View on a Map, and they can actually view uh, on, the, in their, on their mapping, their mapping uh, website the location. They can click to send an email, or they can click to go right straight to that website. Okay. The third one, View Family Tree. When I click on this, okay, it's actually going to tell you in the actual shareable CD, the reader version of Roots Magic is going to appear. Okay. In this case, we don't pop up that reader version because we can't pop up that reader version while the full version of Roots Magic is actually already running in the background. Okay, so it's just telling you that when you send this CD and they click on View Family Tree, it's going to bring up that read-only version of Roots Magic with your data. They don't have to go file open and load it or do anything. It's automatically going to be there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on Exit to close this screen back out and once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to click on Next. Roots Magic is going to go out, collect the files. So it's collecting the data files and collecting all those media items that I've added to people or to families or to sources or to whatever in my database. So it's going to have all of those pictures. And now Roots Magic is saying, your shareable CD is ready to burn. The files for your shareable CD have been created in the following folder. So if you were to go to this folder on your hard drive, you will find all of the files necessary for that shareable CD. It's going to have your data file. It's going to have all your media files. It's going to have the read-only version of Roots Magic. It's going to have that little intro screen, everything. Now, you'll notice that there's two options. I can say burn that shareable CD right now or say I will burn it later using my own CD burning software. Now there's two reasons why you might want to burn the CD later. The first one is if you happen to want to put other files on that CD. What you can do is you can go into this folder and add other items to that CD, to, into that folder and then when you go and burn all the files in that folder onto the CD, you get all of those additional files. Now, those files end up on the CD, but the CD does not have a menu to bring those up. But it is a way if you want to send some additional files along uh, with the shareable CD so that if a person you send it to knows what they're doing and goes and looks at the files on the CD, they will send, see them there. Um, it, that gives you the, the option there. The second reason you might want to burn a CD later is if your CD burner is incompatible with the CD burner driver that we include with Roots Magic. In other words, if Roots Magic, if you try to burn a CD and it comes up and it says, I can't see your CD or your CD is too new for this burner driver or whatever, that's the second reason you may just want to say, exit, exit from here, I'll burn it later, and then go use the CD burning program that came with your CD to burn those files onto, uh, onto that CD. But let's go ahead and say, I want to burn the shareable CD now. So I'm going to click on that, and Roots Magic is going to bring up this screen, and from this screen, it basically, three steps. One, put a blank CD into your CD drive or a DVD. Okay, the little red notice is basically saying if your CD burner software is, kind of starts up automatically, which they sometimes will when you put a blank CD in, close that program. You don't need that program because Roots Magic is going to do the burning. Okay, the second, select which drive it is. In other words, select which drive is your CD drive and it should be selected by default. You have an option. If you want Roots Magic to kick out the CD after it's finished burning, you can check that. And then the third, click the button, and that will burn the CD. Now, since you can't really see this, I'm not actually going to click this and burn a CD. But what will happen is when I click Burn CD, it will burn all of those files on the CD, and I will then have a CD with the database, the media, a read-only version of Roots Magic and that, that opening page. Now, 
When you send that to a person, keep in mind they need to have Windows to run that. Okay, so if you send that to a person that has a Mac, that Mac by default is not going to run that CD because the Mac cannot run Roots Magic. Okay, and this shareable CD is actually a copy of Roots Magic, a read-only copy of Roots Magic. So it does need Windows to run. Now, if that if that Mac does have um, you know Fusion or Parallels, then you may or may not be able to get that to run. I personally have not tried that. Okay, so I'm not going to I'm not going to click on Burn, but once I click on Burn, Roots Magic is going to take this database and everything. I then have a CD that when that family member puts that CD in, it is going to bring up that little intro page. The user can click View My Family Tree, and it's going to bring up what looks almost exactly like what you see on the screen, except that the user can navigate around. They can double click on people and open up their edit screen, and they can look at all of the data. They can look at the pictures. They can do all of that. They just can't change anything. Whereas in the full version, you can come over and edit. On that shareable CD, they can't make changes to that. Okay. Now, once you have these CDs, what, what do you want to do with them? One thing is you can actually use these for gifts. So around Christmas time, you can go ahead and make up shareable CDs and send those to the family members and say, Merry Christmas, here is our family. Okay, and you can go, they can actually put that CD in, they can navigate around, they can look at the pictures, they can even come up and print some reports. So when they click on the little printer icon on their shareable CD, they can print pedigree charts and, and family group sheets and things like that. So you can send the entire family and they can print the family group sheet for just their family, you know, or doing whatever they want in that case. Okay, but what they don't know is that what you've basically done is sent them a backup. You've basically seeded your backup out among your relatives because this CD has an actual copy of your database. It's just, Roots Magic just takes the whole database and burns out on the CD, and takes your media items and burns out on the CD. Okay. For those who have been using a GEDCOM to send data to family members, that's great if you want them to be able to edit the data. In other words, if they have a genealogy program that they're going to pull the data into, and you want to be able to let them make changes. But if what you mainly want to do is just provide them with a copy of the data and the media and everything. The shareable CD is much better at that. One, they aren't going to be making changes to the data. And two, it, it has a nice interface where they can go around, navigate around, print reports, and see the images. Okay, a GEDCOM file does not have those images. It will keep the image links, but if you want the images to go, you have to go out and collect those up and send those separately. The shareable CD takes care of all of that for you. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in to Tools, and I'm going to come back in to create a shareable CD again, and we're going to spend a little bit more time on this front page because we showed you how to create that shareable CD. So now there's a couple of little issues that we might want to think about. Okay, you notice that this first part is just telling you what it is. Now, you're also going to see text in red. And whenever you see something in red, that usually means you really ought to read this. Okay, and so what it's saying is that this shareable CD is an exact copy of this database. As I mentioned, it can be treated as a backup because it's just taking your entire database and burning that on the CD. What that means, though, is that if you have any private information, private facts, private notes, private anything that's in there, that is going to be on that shareable CD as well. Okay, Roots Magic is going to burn the CD as is. So what, what it's basically saying is, if you have any data in this file that you don't want to put on a shareable CD, what you can do is create a GEDCOM file from this database and 
when you do that, use the privatizing features to strip out any information that you don't want. Then create a new blank database and import that GEDCOM file into that new blank database and create your shareable CD from that database. Okay, another thing that you might want to do as opposed to uh, stripping out private information is you may want to create a shareable CD with just part of your family line. Okay, you may have somebody and all you really want is the Smith side of the line. Okay, well here's how you can do that. I'm going to go up and I'm going to create a new database and I'm going to just call it temp Smith file and choose whatever options I want. Click OK and Roots Magic is going to create a new blank database. Let's go ahead and close that side list. It's created a new blank database right here. I'm going to take Howard, who's the starting person of the, the line I want, and I'm going to click and drag and drop him over into the new blank database. Roots Magic is going to say, who do you want to copy? And I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, the, his ancestors and their children. In other words, I want Howard, all of his ancestors, and the children for each of those. I'm going to click OK. Roots Magic is going to copy that over. And I now have a database. And I'm going to need to actually go in and select Howard Smith, Jr to make him that starting person. Okay, so you can see this new database is simply this part right here, just Howard and his father and mother and their lines. So I now have a new temporary database with just that part of the family that I'm interested in, and I can just go up in, select this file by clicking on it, go up to Tools, create a shareable CD, and I'm now in the process of creating a shareable CD of just that family line. Okay, I can just step through, do it, and that shareable CD that I create will be based on this file, not this file. So I don't have to worry about them having all of this information on the mother's side of the family. Okay, I can do, I can do that, whether it's an, all the ancestors of a particular person, the descendants of a particular person. If I only want people whose last name is Smith, I can do any of that uh, but just by dragging and dropping the people uh, that I'm interested in there. Once I'm done, once I've created that shareable CD, I just select this file, do File, Delete, and it's going to say, do you want to delete this database? Look and make sure it's the right one. We don't want you deleting your main database. Say, yes, I want to delete it delete that database, it's going to get rid of that database, and then I can click the little Maximize button to expand me back out to full screen for my main database. Okay, now, I mentioned before, if you wanted to create one that was privatized, okay, in other words, let's go ahead and say we want the whole database, we just don't want people that are living to be shown as living. Now, this isn't as big of a deal with a shareable CD as it would be for something like a website. With a website, you're putting the data up on a, on a forum where anybody can come look at it. So people that are living, you do want to privatize that. In the case of a CD, usually you know who it is you're sending the CD to, and so having, the, having a person privatized, in other words, having their name uh, changed to living, is not necessarily as big of a deal. But let's go ahead and show you anyways. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say export. In other words, I want to export to a GEDCOM file. Now when I do that, I can go ahead and select everyone or I can choose some group of people. But right here is the part I wanted to mention, the privacy options. Now, like I say, you may not want to bother privatizing living people, but if you do want to, you can do that right from here. If you choose, I want to privatize living people, then Roots Magic is going to follow these two rules to privatize them. For the names for living people, in this case, it'll print their full name. Or I can say, write the word living for their names. As for facts, what do I want to show? Do I want to actually have it include the full date and place 
for the fax for living people, or do I want it to not print fax at all? In other words, if they're living, don't print births and deaths and marriages or any of that. Or I can say only print the date. Okay, so it would say, oh, they were born on this date, but it won't show the place. Or I can say only show the place. So it'll say they were born in this place, but it won't tell you when. It won't give you the date. Or you can say year only. They were born this year. It won't show you the day and the month, and it won't show you the place. Or you can say year or place. They were born this year in this place. So you can kind of choose at what level you want it to actually privatize living people. But the ones that you are more likely to use are going to be these two options right here, include private facts or include private notes. Now, in previous webinars, we've shown you this. And I'll go back in real quickly and kind of show you these. If you have a note that's been marked as private, um, I mean, a fact that's been marked as private. In other words, if you went in and marked somebody's death fact as private, if you check this, the net fact will be included in the JEDCOM. Okay? If you don't check this, then any fact that you've marked as private will not be included in that JEDCOM. The same thing with private notes. If you put these little brackets, these little squiggly braces in a note, anywhere in a note, anything between those braces is considered private. So if you say include that, then those private notes will be included when you create this JEDCOM. If you check that checkbox, um, I mean, excuse me, if you check that checkbox, it will include those private notes. If you leave it unchecked like the default, anything between those little braces will be removed from the notes as Roots Magic creates that JEDCOM. So that JEDCOM won't have any private facts and won't have any private notes. So let me go ahead and, and you can also come over here and choose what else you want. Maybe you don't want any notes in your shareable CD. Well, you can uncheck this, and when you create this JEDCOM, it won't have any notes or any sources or any LDS information, or you can strip out the addresses. So you can choose what it is that you actually want to include or not, a, not to include in your shareable CD. Okay, I'm going to go in real quick and kind of show you this. When I s I'm highlighting a person's fact for a person, there's a checkbox right there that says private. And that's what we're talking about, a private fact. If I highlight that birth and check private, that fact is now private. And if I tell Roots Magic do not include private facts in the JEDCOM, that birth won't go. So I can privatize individual facts like that. Okay, and for any of the notes, as I mentioned, little squiggly braces, uh, will privatize any part or all of the note. Okay, so that's an overview. As you can see, it's actually a very, very easy, quick process to create a shareable CD. You know, the only thing you need to be uh, cognizant of is only include the data you really want included on that shareable CD. So you can use either export to JEDCOM import that JEDCOM into a new database to get the, just the data you want, or you can use the drag and drop. Uh, the reason I showed you both is because drag and drop does not have the privatizing options in it. Okay. In other words, if you create a new database and drag and drop people from one to the other, it does not give you the option to privatize the data. That's really only good for bringing specific groups of people over into the new database. JEDCOM has all those privatizing options, so that is, allows you to uh, privatize living people or strip out private notes or private facts. So, uh, do we have any questions, Mike? Okay, someone asked, if I make a shareable CD in the UK and send it to Australia or the USA, will the recipients be able to use it? Uh, yes, as long as they are running Windows, a computer that has Windows, uh, they, any of them should be able to run that shareable CD on their computer. Any other questions? Okay, then uh, Diane asked, 
can you burn the can you copy the burn file to a thumb drive to use instead of burning it to a CD? So a shareable thumb drive. A shareable thumb drive. To be honest, I've never tried it, um, but I don't know a reason why you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, you wouldn't necessarily have the ability for it to kind of auto run. That's one of the things on the CD is when you put that in there, it should be able to auto run where the, the little home page comes up. When you create a shareable, a shareable CD and put it on a flash drive, that flash drive is not going to have uh, the ability to kind of do that auto run on that menu. That being said, you should be able to go ahead and if they know which file to, you know, go into and double click on, they should be able to bring, uh, to bring that up. Now, um, keep in mind that putting it on the flash drive, even though that flash drive is editable, that data on that flash drive is still not editable because the copy of Roots Magic that is getting put on that CD and in this case put on that flash drive is still a read only uh, a read only version of Roots Magic so it's not uh, going to allow you to edit even if it's on a flash drive which is editable. Now I do see a comment here if your image is an ISO then you can't use it on a thumb drive Roots Magic is not creating an ISO here it is creating the files directly in a folder so that's not an issue that, that basically if you go into that folder that Roots Magic says your files are right here, you can burn those files on a, on a CD, on a DVD, or copy them uh, onto a flash drive. Okay, any other questions? Um, someone asked, uh, you mentioned that this is a backup. If it's read-only, how can you use it to restore it? Okay. So. Basically, your this works like a backup. It's not officially a backup, so there's not like a restore command like there is for the, the file restore. But when you go into that CD, when you look on that CD using your file manager, you will see your data file. You'll see your whatever .r mgc file, your actual data file, you will also see a folder that has all of your images on it. And all you have to do is using drag and drop from your file manager, just drag and drop that database and those pictures back onto your hard drive. Now, most of the time that should be all you need to do um, is, is just drag and drop it on. Some versions of Windows are a little bit flaky, and when you drag files from a CD onto your hard drive, Windows forgets to unmark them as read-only. If that happens, you may need to go into those files after you've copied them onto your hard drive, select those files, right-click, and unmark the read-only checkbox. Most of the time, you don't have to worry about that, but that, you know, if if it does come up saying that it's read-only, you would need to do that. Okay. Um, someone asked, can you create multiple shareable CDs of the same information? Okay. Um, wh when Roots Magic creates that shareable CD, it tells you that folder that those files are in. So if you want to create multiple shareable CDs with the exact same information, you're almost better off when Roots Magic says, do you want us to burn this right now or do you want to burn it later? You're usually better off just saying, I'm going to burn it later and keep, you know, write down that folder and then just go into that folder and use your own CD burning program and say, I'm going to burn five copies of this CD. And it will ask you, put in a CD, it'll burn it, put in a CD, burn it. Um, so. While Roots Magic is not really designed to burn multiple CDs like that, your own CD burning program will do it. So you'll want to do it that way. Oh, are there any other questions? Yeah, I think you've addressed uh, the rest of these. So, okay. Well, like I say, you know, 
you, it's it's fine to share data with your family. Uh, you sending them a report if all they want is one little bit of information. Sending them a report is great. If you want them to be able to edit the data uh, and be able to make changes to the data, in other words, they're they're wanting to kind of start this genealogy hobby themselves, so to speak, then the GEDCOM is probably the best way to do that. Um, although if they happen to be starting with Roots Magic, you could send them a backup copy of your database as well. But if what you're wanting is to share the most amount of data the easiest way you can where you want to share not just your data but your pictures without them having to know how do I import this data into a program, how do I put these pictures on, a, on my hard drive, how do I relink up all the broken links between that GEDCOM and the pictures. If what you want is just an easy way for them to be able to see the data and navigate around and be able to print some reports, then the shareable CD is the way to go. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this webinar, and hopefully uh, you'll find some good uses for shareable CDs.